You know, I am a, a huge fan of homemade breads. Uh, I could probably sit down and eat the whole loaf, and I know I could with this one. Reginald Beck from Federal Way is here with Southern Sweet Potato Walnut Bread. Walnut bread with sweet potatoes. What a great combination. Yeah. It works well for me. Where did it come from? Actually, um, the good Lord just put it right on my heart, and I thought about potatoes, and out they came. You uh, you have a church down in Tacoma, right? Oh, I'm a associate minister at a church okay. in Tacoma. And, and you have you have church socials and you, you cook this up for them? Yes, we do. Okay. Yes, we well, do. Let, let's have some. The best food in the world is at a church social. Let, it let's, sure let's is. Cook. All right. Well, first of all, what we want to do is start with uh, flouring and uh, greasing a pan, about a 9 by 5 pan. Okay. And we can now, put that aside. Folks, I want, to, I want you to see how well this is done. Reginald yes. also owned a bakery, so he really knows what he's doing when he's greasing this pan. Let's move on. Okay. All right. Well, what we'll do is I like to, you don't really have to, but I really like to start with the dry ingredients first. Okay. So okay. we're going to start with roughly about a um, cup and a third of flour. Mm -hmm. And we're going to add sugar. And this is just all-purpose flour? Yes, just regular all-purpose flour. Regular sugar, okay. And I prefer using King Arthur flour. That's one of the uh, better ones. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, because starting with good ingredients is going to give you a better result. Makes a difference. Absolutely. All right, now we put in the baking powder. Excuse me, baking soda first. Okay. Then baking powder. And you'll notice I'm putting the ingredients in separate in different see. places. Separate places in uh -huh. the bowl, too. So that way when the average phone call comes in while you're mixing, you can go, back you can go and right down. back. Exactly. Know exactly of course, where you are. if everyone put all their stuff in little bowls like this, they could see which ones were empty this too. Is but true. This is true. Most of us don't do it this way. Exactly. At home. All right. Then we have the cloves, ground cloves, and we have ground nutmeg, Ooh, wow. ground cinnamon. As you can see, these are the fall flavors here. They're getting to work, isn't it, folks? And then salt. And that's it for right. the majority of our dry ingredients. Then we whisk, whisk them all together. Make sure they get really well mixed. Or as you said before, you don't want pockets of surprise, do you? No, we don't want any pockets of surprise. Right. No one wants to bite into a chunk of baking soda. Oh, I've uh -huh. done that more than one or two times before. <laughs> All righty, now we're done with our, we'll set these aside after we're done with our dry ingredients. Okay. Set this to the side here. I'll hand that to George for yep. a moment. You betcha. And now we start with our wet ingredients. And All we'll right. begin with one can of mashed yams. Now these come whole, mm -hmm. but I generally will mash them first and then I'll beat them with and an electric drain mixer. Them off? Yes, drain okay. all the liquid, mash them and then beat them to remove the strings. Okay. Sweet potatoes do have some stringy fibers. Yes, do. So we'll start with Those that. Look really good. And I'll need that clear bowl, oh, sure. sir. Oops. Okay. <laughs> we almost had it. All right. Now we add the sweet potatoes or the yams. I prefer yams. You can use sweet potatoes, but yams tend to have a bit better flavor from, in my opinion. And have you ever tried this recipe with pumpkin? Yes, I did. How's now, that? Now, the pumpkin, you won't need as much. This is one whole can of sweet potatoes. With the pumpkin, you probably want to use about maybe three quarters. Okay. Now, those are yams or, or sweet potatoes? These are yams. And, and do yams have a better color to them, really, from just from sweet the... Sweet potatoes are actually darker orange than yeah. yams. I, I think that's a little better presentation of color myself, but that's, that's a personal opinion. And then we want to add some melted butter. Right. How much? Uh, that's about a stick and a half. Okay. About a stick and a half of melted butter. A really butter. big bowl full. And let's see, I had a <laughs> spatula here. Can I have that back or anyone? Got a, there we go. There we go. Perfect. Let me get all that out of there. Because with the potatoes, this is going to make kind of a dry mixture by the mm -hmm. time you get the flour added to it. Sure. And you want to move relatively quickly before your butter cools down. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. I'll give that to you. I hold want on that to this. Set up. And we get those going first. Okay, and what's then next? I'll have uh, Carol beat these eggs while I add this. Can I borrow your uh, whisk Ah, uh, yes. There? Mm -hmm. Thank you. There we go. And then what we'll do is begin to zest a little, little bit of lemon little here. Lemon, huh? Average about one to two teaspoons. And of course, this is at your own discretion. Right. If you're really, if you're somewhat of a lemon head, then you can put more. Maybe a little bit more. And I see you're using the zest for that really lemony flavor. It exactly. smells so good. It really zest, makes a difference. It? it does. Both in the eating and when it's baking. Yeah. It always okay. amazes me a lemon blossom is the sweetest blossom of any fruit tree I've ever smelled. <laughs> really? They and are it wonderful. comes up with a really sour fruit, but the <laughs> blossom is wonderful. And okay, then we're just we about there. This? Yes, we are ready. You may add the eggs. All right, we're going to add that lemon zest. Okay. And get that right off of that planer, sure. and I think that's good enough. Okay, hand that to George. That's a very we'll neat. Get that mixed up here, 
And let's see, I will probably need one teaspoon, and you can use your own discretion on this. On the teaspoon, you can use about a teaspoon of vanilla or two. Okay. For a day, I'm feeling generous. Let's use two. Okay. Okay. More is better. That's the Darth motto. <laughs> And as Although chef, in baking, one has to be careful. <laughs> as Chef Carol has stated, the good ingredients, you don't want to be skimpy when it comes down to the vanilla. You want to use good, it's such pure a good vanilla. Taste. Makes a big difference. Yeah. And oh, that's going to be wonderful. Get that there. Give that to George. I got that. Okay. Get that combined. And we are just about done. This is a very okay. quick bread. Doesn't take very long to sure put together. Sure quick bread. <laughs> yeah. There's no kneading involved, none nope, of that stuff. Nope, not a bit. All right, now what you want to do in this order, which makes it much better, you'll take your dry. Okay. You want to add the wet right on top of the dry. Get the rest of that. And we hand the bowl to Maestro here. <laughs> there you go. And then we add the walnuts right on top of the wet. And we're going to need a spatula. And we're going to need out. another spatula to fold these over. That would be perfect. Okay, now, unlike cake batter, again, you don't want to beat it. You just simply want to combine the ingredients. So you fold, fold them over. Now, you use regular walnuts. I, I'm a big fan of black walnuts. Would that work? Yes, but you might want to worry about uh, just how tasty the taste, yeah, you know, if it's a very rich. Take strong, over. Yeah. That's the only thing you have to worry about, the type of walnuts. Now, some people I've noticed are allergic to walnuts. Mm -hmm. So if you like nuts and you're not allergic to, say, pecans, Perfect switch. Oh, pecans would be lovely pecans? in this Yeah, too. it really yes. would. Now that I think about it, it might even be better. <laughs> <laughs> that's something to think about at home. Yeah. So and that's now, one of the reasons the we ask you to get the tape, by the way, or the, the uh, pictures yeah. of the, the shows, because little tips like that come along and they're very handy. So this is the point now where more is not better. Don't over stir it. Exactly. You just simply want to make sure that you don't have many clumps in the middle, but you also don't want to beat it because you simply just want them combined. And it doesn't take that long. No, really it really doesn't. Once everything all is moistened, you're done. And that'll make a big difference in the end product, in the crumb, and the presentation, and the texture. And I think that's about it. What do you think, okay. Chef? That looks great to okay. me. Okay, right. I usually check once or twice to make sure I haven't left a little pocket, a little pocket here yep. and there. And I do believe we're ready. I think you got them. And we'll rotate the pan. Hand this to the maestro. Okay. And then we'll smooth that out. Doesn't that smell good? So do you, I, I love the I smell. know that you used to own a bakery. Do you do a lot of baking at home, Reginald? Yes, I do. My family loves it. I bet. So I don't I'll tend to get bet. out of too yeah. much of that. <laughs> what are you going to cook tonight, huh? Uh, let's see, you have to call my wife for that one. So is this ready to go in the this oven? This is absolutely ready. Now, oh, one of the right. tricks that uh, Chef Carol has told me, you can run uh, oil through a knife and run it right through the middle, of, and that will help the end product as far oh, as the bacon. It allows right? it to rise. There you it get does. a much higher rise. Okay, we are ready to go. Into now, the oven. How hot and how long? You want to put that into an oven at least um, 350 degrees for 40 to 50 minutes. Good long time, mm -hmm. but, but not a real hot oven. But you also want to check it because depending on how hot your oven is, you may want to use a cake tester just to make sure right, you want to bake it till it's done. My oven cooks a little bit hot. Exactly. And, and you have to be aware of that or you can ruin a lot of and stuff. And let's see, do I have something to wipe my hands on? Yes. Just here. Something here. All there right, that will be great. And then what we will do. It's not super hot. All right. This is great. This is the magic of TV, so we uh -huh. have asbestos hands. <laughs> oh, isn't that, oh, isn't that nice? And we take that out, and we get a nice little... It's mm, lovely. Ah, the smell. Okay. And now, what we'll do is we'll slice it. Now I see the baker back again. Yeah. Perfect <laughs> slices. Yeah. Call it a weakness. Yeah. There's nothing weakness about this. It just smells... Oh. If it tastes one-tenth as good as it smells, it's a, it's a huge hit. And I think it's going to taste a lot better than that. And we're going to just put those over and let one fall over like that. Or should we have one for... We have one for a taster. There we go. And oh, let's see. Oh, but I'm going to have to share this with George, huh? You, okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, she is. <laughs> 
That's a nice okay, shot. Okay, George. All right. The moment of oh, truth. Oh, you wanted part of this too. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. That's, mm, ooh, that's lovely. Isn't that good? It tastes like autumn. Mm -hmm. It's all those things. Very good. Mm, very very good. nice. This Thank would you. be good at any time of the year or any time of the day. No bullets. 1 800 443 1999. Reginald, thank you very, very much. Thank you for having me here. This is great. Thank you. It's perfectly done. Thank you.